Some of you might have seen a recent video of mine where I was building and painting a Skitter Strand Arachnorock Spider. And if you watch that, you'll know that that is the first model of my, uh, my um, new army this year, part of the Armies on Parade project that uh, my local Games Workshop shop has. And uh, yeah, so that's the first one. Uh, although I already have these. Now, these are actually our sons. Um, a few years ago, back in the day where you could have orc goblin armies, he had an orc goblin army, and these were his spider riders. Um, you can tell it's a while ago because you've got the rectangle bases. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I've got two arachnorock spiders now, and I've got these and a spider wizard. That's the total of my um, army so far. Um, these were done quite a few years ago and the deal was my son would paint uh, the spider and I would paint the goblin, all right? And his color scheme for his army was red. So the 10 spiders that I already have are red spiders. Some are uh, just a, a regular red like that. Uh, other times our son changed it up a bit. So you've got like a, a pinky, red one they're all like this um, um variations and this he's you know as you can see he's done a half and half there which is quite a good idea and a more pinky one there so i need more spiders um now in the next month or so apparently there's going to be a new book on the gits as they are now known um and maybe hopefully there'll be some new models out but um, I've got to build up a fair size army and at the moment if you've got a spider army it is if you're just fielding just spider themed ones it's these fellas and the arachnorox all right so uh, I need more spider riders and now there might be more models out in the next few months but I can't wait so what I've done is move the old bring in the new pick these up from a local shop this morning went down there had a Really uh, fun two-hour game, something like that, yep. Yeah. And lost, as usual, but great fun doing so. So this is what you get. Um, um, two sprues of um, ten spiders, all different. Okay, that's one. Two more there, and then the riders. Okay. Um, the puzzle was... Um, there was a sprue of rectangle bases with the sculpted detail. And it's like, eh? I thought, I thought um, you know, Fantasy had gone over to round bases. And then I realised the box was rattling. And you get 10 of the curvy ones, all right? So I gave away the rectangle ones. Um, number one, I prefer the curvy bases. I could have kept them so they're all like this, I suppose. But I prefer the curvy ones. And also, it's a bit of a faff to get in there and under the spider and paint, you know, um, all the detail. Some of them are quite plain. Some have got cobwebs. Some of them have got spiders. Some of them have got skulls. So, no, nah, not doing that. I might put the odd mushroom or something on there. Um, Colour scheme-wise, this is our son's regiment of red. I'm not going to follow... And I'm not going to have them all red. Um, I've already made up my mind what I'm doing with these. These are going to be yellow with black legs. So um, I think I'm going to snip them all out, glue them together, prime them, and come back when we've got some yellow on, I think. So we're off and running, with running being the operative word, because in 13 days, I think, yep, yeah, 13 days time there's a build challenge at my local shop and it's um the theme is bring in something that you've made either since christmas or you got for christmas and um uh, this is since christmas so i'm hoping to get these done i've got 13 days to do so um and because of that i'm going to be using mainly wherever possible contrast paints um because as i've said before they are brilliant. They do a lot of the work for you. They will um, they will pull in the darker areas and darken to give you a, a wash. 
and they will pull away from the higher areas to give you a, a, a bit of uh, highlighting. So as I said, yellow and black for the spiders. So that's all on. You see some of them have got spikes that I'm going to have to uh, pick out. This fella here, um, I think I'm going to put orange or red in the cracks there. So it kind of looks like a, a lava type of thing. Um, some of them are, are, are the same. These two are the same. Um, that one's the same. That's the volcano -y one. And we've got two skulls as well. This fella. And I think I'm going to pick those out in black. It's a shame, actually, you've got a rider sitting right in front of it. Um, it'd be nice if the skull was on the back looking that way. But there you go. Um, yeah, the uh, the boss spider on my um, my red version, our son's unit, um, his boss spider has these human skulls embedded in his back and he's got these well you've got an option of of the uh, two front legs you can have these barbed ones or just regular ones um i like the barbed ones denotes it's a mean spider and so that's what i've done but this time just for a bit of variation i've glued them in uh raised up all right um <clears throat> so that's that the other thing is because this is a i've got to do this quick this is a real speedy one um i'm not going to paint the goblins in the same way as uh, i normally do um i'm actually going to use a, a method that i used to do for my 40k orcs which is a bit unconventional it's mainly using contrast um and for that the first step is put on a coat on their skin of um plague bearer flesh which is an unusual step but trust me uh the next step um we'll sort that out um so yeah the color scheme is going to be different but i quite like that i like the idea that it's, I, I have different units of spider riders from different areas that have all come together for this fight um the other thing that i've decided is the uh, my other ones the red ones um, they all have red shields, and I'm going to keep that going on these ones um, just to show, even though they, that they're a different unit of spider riders with different color spiders, um, the unifying theme will be the uh, the red shields. So I'll come back when I've um, uh, progressed with these. Well, the contrast bad moon yellow wasn't sufficient on its own, so I've had to wash the yellow with some Agrax Earthshade, just to fill in some of the details there. All right, might do a bit of uh, dry brushing. Uh, <clears throat> this one here, um, I've put some white in the gaps. I'm going to put some red or some orange in there, try and get like a lava effect on that fella. Not sure what to do with these ones. I've got a couple that are like this. I might put banding on there, don't know. Um, yeah, I've decided they're yellow, but they're going to have a little bit more colour. Um, I've chickened out completely on um, on painting that face in black. I think that will be sufficient. Like I say, you know, you're going to have a, a goblin sat right in front of it, so you're not going to see much anyway. Um, picked his spikes out in black. There's another one. Oh, yeah, over there. I might pick his spikes out in a different colour. So they've all got this... Uh, black legs and they've got yellow bodies but then there's going to be other colors going on uh <clears throat> yeah stage two in the goblin color over the plague bearer flesh i've now put some bell tan green and uh yeah in a minute i'll be putting something else on change of plan i was putting colors in the cracks and things like that and uh, it just wasn't looking right I wasn't liking it at all. Um, so I've decided to be waspy and uh, I'm just going to be doing yellow and blacks. I think that'll be fine on all different types of spiders. The other thing, I started picking out the eyes in black, but at this scale, those eyes are so small, they just look like black blobs and it's not that good. So um, what I've done is I've washed the eye socket areas with, is it Carisborg Crimson? 
just warm them up a bit and I'm going to be picking them all out in um, in my usual turquoisey colour that I do for uh, my goblin troops. Um, as you can see, just base coated the mandibles in Screaming Skull. By the way, that, that carapace, that's not finished. I can I know that there's bits of white still showing. I've got to tidy everything up. And so these guys are almost done. Um, what I've done over the, the two contrast paints is um, dry brushed a bit of Uriel yellow, like on his knee there and on his forehead and on his nose and um, and just a tiny little bit of uh, red on the end of the nose. So what I'm doing now is I'm going in and uh, picking out the details one by one. Right, well, I'm almost at the end now. And um, what I'm doing is what I do with all these uh, Games Workshop um, troops where you have um, different combinations you can do and, um, you know, alternative parts is <clears throat> I've, uh, I've put out my original red ones and alongside them put one of the new versions in the new colour scheme. And I'm just making sure, you know, that uh, apart from the, um, the old boss there, um, just making sure that the troop that's going to be on the spider isn't the same troop that was on that spider before, if you see what I mean. Massive leap forward to the end. Um, that's because I've got so many projects on the go at the moment. And then I got lured by Slanesh and was taken away from the gits. So uh, it's taken a while to uh, get them uh, all, all finished. Well, no, I, I take that back. I've, I've been playing with these like two weeks ago. I've had these done for like two weeks, but I've been too busy building and doing videos of other things. So, so there we go. This is them done. I'm very happy with how they've come out. Um, although um, they are much, much more colourful than I was intending them to be. But I don't mind it. Um, I like colourful these days. Um, they will fit in. If I, if, if I filled these with my squigs, um, they're going to fit right in, aren't they? So that's my next generation of spider riders done. Next filming part of this, next part of this will be... Well, I've just picked up from a local shop. I've got a spider fang big boss on gigantic spider who's going to be the hero. Now, the intention was I was going to build a spider army for uh, this year's Armies on Parade. And I was kind of hoping that in the new battle tome, which is imminent in release, um, I, I would um, there would be new spidery models and... Uh, there doesn't look like there is. Um, all we've got is some gits on wolves and a, a new boss with a big squig. And that's it. So if you're going to have a spider army, your option are spider riders or the arachnorok spiders. And you can do that, and I could do that, but um, you're kind of limited, aren't you? So um, I don't think I'm going to do that. But I've just had, and I've had this on order for a while, but they lost my order uh, um, the uh, packaging company, the tra um, transit company lost the order, so it had to be resent. So this is the next uh, thing that was going to happen if I did do my army. I'm still doing it because I still uh, am going to be using spiders. It's just that he's now not going to be the centerpiece of a whole new army. I've, I've, I've been converted to Slanesh. So this is an unboxing for the next part of this video. So trying to do it one-handed. Of course, it's fail cast. I knew it was going to be fail cast. Um, not a lot you can do about that. Was, again, it would be nice if they had um, redone some of these characters in plastic. So it being fail cast, many, many uh, pouring lugs to be snipped off. This also needs a good wash as well because it um, it's a soft form of resin. This is rather good. It, it's really good. The, the, the box says gigantic spider. And I guess back in the day when this first came out, this did constitute a gigantic spider. Looks kind of like middle size to me now, but he's good. I like his face. I haven't seen really good photos of, of, of this model because um, it's quite intricate and it's hard to get. You need like a 360 degree thing. Um, that's nice. 
webbed up victim. Where's the, ah, that's interesting. That's good. Um, you've got a choice of bases. Um, back in the day, wasn't it? Um, Fantasy was square and uh, 40K was round. Um, and um, But you're given two options. I'll be going round. I've never, ever liked square bases, ever. It's just something about them. Um, and here's the boss. Now, I... Hang on a sec. Let's have a look at his face there. And count the amount of feathers, right? And then I'll bring over my boss. Um, is he the same? Is that the same head? Obviously, less amount of feathers. Quick look at that. Quick look at that. That. I think it's the same head. But just more with more feathers. Don't matter. Yeah, quite looking forward to this. That's about it, isn't it? He's got some sort of howler or something that I'm going to have to build. Um, so yeah, snip everything off and give it a wash and super glue it together, and I'll come back with what I think of him assembled. Well, before I give it a wash, I've been snipping the uh, pieces out. This is going to be confusing, and I'm really hoping that uh, um, the uh, uh, images on on the internet are going to be helping me. And I don't think they are because of the photos I've seen of these uh, this built built up kit. Uh, it's hard to see what's what. But look, the uh, there the eight legs are all numbered. You've actually got embossed numbers on the underside, so rules out any plan on having him rearing up or anything. So fair enough, one to eight. But when you turn to the legs, only one leg on each sprue is actually numbered. So that's number one. That's number 10. 10? How can that be number 10? This is getting even more confusing. And that's number seven. How can that be number 10? So I'm confused. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash these while they're still on the sprue. One's one's pinged off. I've cut off most of the uh, the pouring lugs. Um, I'm gonna wash these while they're on the sprue, and then I've got to try and uh, work that out. Right, ready for primer. That took a bit of figuring out. Um... There's no instructions come with this kit and the photos you see on the internet are not that clear and it's an odd posed model so it's hard to make out just what's what. So I'd figured out that where this goes on the back of the spider because there's a little lug on the back of here, it's under the blue tack at the moment, there's a little square lug which matches a hole in his back, right? So I know, oh, I know that's that's upright but then that other piece that long piece it's like what is this it took me quite a while to figure out that it was actually three pieces joined together and you had to cut each one out to make the uh the base and the sides of his little uh chair all right uh that's him all ready for primer and then yeah <laughs> the other head scratcher was how to go about the legs as I say, there was only three uh, numbered legs. Um, what I did was I put in number seven, because I knew that one went there, which is a rather raised leg. Um, super glued him in place. And then I put in, I think, that one and that one opposite each other, because they were basically the same. And I figured, okay, they, they, if I can get two touching the ground, um, um, I should be all right. But then I was just offering it up to the um, the the base bit, you know, the, the log with the body, um, which I'm not spraying just yet. I've got to I've got to um, put some scatter material on that before priming. Um, I want to be able to see that, and if he's like you know just standing regular, you're not going to see it. So uh, what I did was got a blob of blue tack, put it on top of the log, put him into the position I liked him in, where he's raised up enough. And then I've super glued 
the rest of the legs in place. And that's where he looks, well, he looks dead at the moment, doesn't he? Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to spray everything white and then we'll be back. There we go. Out with the contrast paints then. This is the pose for the spider. See, he stands up fine, rearing somewhat. I'm going to have him sort of like this. So you can see all that lovely base detail. A bit happier now I'm underway with things. So, uh, yep, yeah. contrast all the way. I've got, what, five days until I need to use him in a game at the shop. I've got five days, but today and tomorrow I'm off for, to off to uh, to uh, on a little excursion. So uh, I don't have long to go. Um, did I say? I can't remember. I haven't got time to go and check back. But uh, this red I've done, it's the contrast paint, and I've just left the uh, the skull that's on his back in the white primer. I'm going to just give that a wash. Um, picked out his mandibles, picked out his uh, fleshy bits. Just got to put washes over that. He's not far off being done. There's the base. Um, glued that bit down. I scatter material with some pebbles in it, making sure the pebbles are near the... Uh, near the, the log just to tie everything in okay and when done he's going to be on there like that right a massive jump through to the end and the reason there's a massive jump through to the end was i only picked him up a week ago a week ago today i picked him up from my local shop uh, so i had a week to do him um but i've had my uh, couple of days down in woking doing my war of the worlds walk so that et up two and a half days of uh, modeling. So it's been a mad rush to get him done, um, but he is done. Here we are. What a charmer. Um, yeah, it was problematical still. Um, not only, you know, the, uh, the assembling of the back banner pole affair with the chair, getting that all to line up and join together and get him on the, uh, onto the spider in, in the right way, getting him to actually stand on his chair because he's wider than the chair. So you have to kind of like put his left foot through that gap to, to have any chance of him standing on it. But uh, there he is. He's done. I'm very happy with him. Um, the other challenge was the base. Uh, the uh, the skeletons wrapped up in silk. The, the, the detail is, is very soft. So it's a bit of a challenge when you dry brush in, but it came out okay. Um, and yeah, I've just jazzed the base up with some uh, grass tufts. I had some spare spiders knocking around and uh, some uh, spare mushrooms off of, uh, I think that's the, uh, the the Loon Shrine kit. So there he is. He's all done. Uh, he's ready to fight um, today in about... Two hours time, there is a battle at my local shop. This is why I, I've been rushing to get him done. Uh, the challenge is to have uh, a hero and two units, minimum of two units, up to the value of 750 points. Uh, don't know what the challenge is, don't know what we're gonna be up to, but I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, he's my hero on his gigantic spider, and I'll just bring in the rest of his army so this is what i'm taking with me today so uh one unit is my recently done spider riders the other unit is our son's arachnorok spider with flinger and missing leg um and then i've also got to bring the points up to 720 i've got my uh my web spinner shaman to bring forth my uh, malevolent moon, who I enjoy using a lot, and the uh, scuttle tide. So, yeah, today it's going to be. Uh, let's get them all together. There we are. Spider tastic today. Uh, before I, I sign off on on this uh, uh, little. Um, build diary i'll come back uh, this afternoon and uh, 
and tell you how long he lasted before he died. Well, he didn't die. He survived to the end. Um, he took a few wounds, and uh, but in the process managed to kill a few Skaven um, that were attacking him. He um, he survived till the end, but the end happened because we ran out of time. Um, he was just on his way to uh, go into another battle, um, but uh, time was up. So he survived, the Arachnox survived, the wizard survived. He was kind of like overlooked. He's so puny that uh, um, um, nobody had spotted him, I don't think. Uh, but my spider riders died. Um, they made the mistake of uh, running out in front of some Skaven who decided to pick on him. So that's it. <clears throat> that's this uh, little video over. Um, and I think this is it now for spiders, uh, for me, for at least quite a while, because since I started this, I've changed my mind. I'm not doing a Amazon parade of spiders. That's going to be Slanesh. Um, and um, if I do do more Git stuff, it's going to be more Squigs and Trogoth. So, uh, but it's a nice way to end end it with a a uh, a Git's hero, Mister Scuttleboss.